Good Saturday night, everybody. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onig with a mid-weekend forecast update for you. We're again showing some pretty quiet conditions into the course of the rest of the weekend. Unfortunately, also very hot out there, but some signs of relief are in store. We'll talk more about that in the extended forecast coming up here in just a little bit. Never been here before? Welcome to the show. Drop your location. Give us a city-state location and a little bit more weather information from where you happen to be. Use that thermometer outside the kitchen window to tell us a little bit more about what's going on in your neck of the woods. We'll tell you a little bit more about the temperatures and conditions here. If you can't stick around for the whole weather blog, we'll be on here for about 10, 15 minutes, depending on what goes on. And of course, you can always pick up more weather information like our 7 to 10 day forecast at WREG.com slash weather. Tonight, warm and pretty quiet. Doesn't look like too much of anything going on in the way of major amounts of problems uh, into the next couple of days outside of the heat and humidity. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. But once again, Hold on for a few days as we get some nicer conditions into and around the area by the time we hit this next week. If you're around eastern Arkansas, even western Tennessee, you might have just enough time to make it out to Village Creek State Park where the Memphis Astronomical Society is holding their star party for tonight. That's going to be a little bit muddled on the information here. 201 County Road 754 near Wynn, Arkansas. More information www.memphisastro.org if you'd like to go out and do some really great stargazing tonight. Decently clear across much of the area, so looking pretty quiet out there. Welcome to everybody who's joining us for tonight around the area. Again, city, state, and if you've got, again, some weather reports, let's see what's going on across the area or from wherever you happen to be for tonight. We're looking, again, at some pretty mild conditions overnight, partly cloudy to mostly clear skies. Those winds out of the south will be very light, so not cooling anything off at this point time and looking for the most part clear as we go toward tomorrow morning. High temperature today, 93. Nowhere near our record high temperature. Close enough, but not a tying or a record high day. Average is where we're supposed to be at this time of the year, lower 80s. And as of right now, again, looking at pretty overdone on the temperatures into the course of the next couple of days. So we could see, again, some pretty steamy conditions out there as we go throughout the next couple of days. 72, our low temperature this morning. 60 is where we should be for this time of the year. No rainfall for the entire month of September. 12 hundredths of an inch, that's it, and that's all. So we're still well ahead for the year, but very dry out there, and that's starting to be a concern too. We'll talk about burn bans coming up here in just a little bit, so stay tuned for more on that. University of Mississippi campus, the student union from Crosby Hall, bright and lit up for tonight, 77 degrees in Oxford, Mississippi at the airport. Northeasterly winds at about 5 miles per hour. West Memphis, Arkansas, looking down I-40 toward Little Rock. And as of right now, again, good traveling conditions out there, 79 degrees at the West Memphis Airport. And a heat index not too bad, about 81 degrees. And several places still have that heat index going on. Big River Crossing and also the area around Mighty Lights, further upstream on the Mississippi, lit up pretty well. Lights of West Memphis, Arkansas, shining brightly out there on the horizon. Storm Tracker 3S radar, zero precipitation seen and none expected into and around the area for tonight. But if you're heading north tonight, you might run into some of this north of, say, Cape Girardeau or Poplar Bluff or back to around Koshkanong, Missouri. Scattered showers and some thunderstorms, most numerous, way over on the other side of the state of Missouri with some showers and thunderstorms from Pittsburgh, Kansas, all the way back up to around Des Moines, Iowa. The heaviest activity just to the east of St. Joseph, Missouri. Not seeing a lot of anything in the way of severe weather, but again, if you're heading north toward I-70 tonight or early tomorrow, you can catch some remnants of that out there. Still 91 degrees at just past 8 o'clock tonight at Memphis International Airport. Heat index of 95 Otherwise, temperatures dropping into the mid-80s and still toasty out there with numbers again back in the upper 80s to around the lower 90s into and around the area for tomorrow. Same story, second verse, same as the first. Song lyric, kids, ask your parents. They can under, they can uh, help you understand a little bit more about that. 50s in Boise, Mickey Callens. Thank you very much for the uh, cooler temperatures a little bit farther away. Hopefully you're not getting too much in the way of 
uh, snow out there with that new storm system rolling on through. Walls, Mississippi, 81. Jeffrey Griffiths, thank you very much uh, for that weather report there. Feels nice outside tonight. Olive Branch, John Marty Smithhart, thank you very much for that weather report for this evening. And everybody else checking in. Uh, from across the Mid-South, welcome to the show, and thanks for stopping on by for tonight out there, and thanks for the weather reports. Through this evening, again, remnant showers could be possible in northern Arkansas and especially southern Missouri. So the farther north and west you go, that's where you'll run into the possibility of more raindrops. Here in the Mid-South, I don't think we're going to be seeing much of anything for quite some time from what it looks like. Temperatures tomorrow morning, about the time we're on the air with News Channel 3 Daybreak Sunday, Mid to upper 60s, that's the coolest we could find. Computer gets a little bit over eager at putting a few showers out there. I don't see any possibility of showers for right now, but we'll keep our eyes open. So tune in tomorrow morning at daybreak, and we'll update you on that. Rapid rise in the temperatures tomorrow afternoon as we go toward lunchtime, post church and Sunday school early on. Numbers in the high 80s to the lower 90s, and temperatures into tomorrow afternoon almost exactly where they were today. If not, a degree or two cooler, or warmer, I should say. The cooler weather is on the way. It's just not quite here yet. And through tomorrow evening, toasty. Those winds continue out of the southeast, doing a good job of keeping the temperatures up into tomorrow night. All right, so taking a look at the extended forecast. Again, these things will change, so you've got to check back every day to see what goes on here. But here's what we're looking for. Temperatures back in the mid-90s. As we go into the rest of tomorrow, the first full weekend of autumn is going to be feeling quite incredibly hot out there, way above normal for this time of the year. Upper 90s for Monday. This is going to be significant because, again, for outdoor practices after school, football, marching band, soccer, baseball, whatever you've got out there, that's some pretty dangerously hot weather to be outdoors after school, the peak heating time of the day. And it's not going to stop as we go through Tuesday. And also, again, seeing for right now, Little, if anything, showing up in the way of precipitation at this time. Next best chance of anything involving precipitation will be coming up next weekend and afterwards. Don't forget, again, it's an election day coming up this Thursday, City of Memphis and Shelby County. So get out and cast your ballot like a good citizen should and make certain, again, not to let the weather ever stop you on casting your ballot as you should be doing so. Back in the lower 80s as we go toward Friday, Friday night football next week, if everything holds, might not be quite as scorching. So we're looking a lot better into and around the area around the end of the week into next weekend, the second weekend of autumn. And then we see the possibility of some showers and thunderstorms. Emphasis on the word some, because right now 30% is not looking all that great. Now, granted, this is still several days in advance, but that's our next best chance of getting anything in here in the way of widespread rainfall anytime soon. So that's about as good as it gets for right now. Steve Christian, Robinsonville, 82. Thank you very much uh, for that weather report there. Glad to see you checking in. Everybody else, thanks for the uh, nice compliments there. Corey Blackman, uh, appreciate that. Thank you very much for choosing uh, News Channel 3. Ready for fall to kick in. Devin Norman, couldn't agree more on that one. Thank you very much for that one. And also, again, seeing the, the temperatures sticking around, hopefully for longer than this, into mid-October. There's always that possibility of an upswing in this forecast, just not seeing it at this point in time, so not really seeing too much out there. Aubrey Crissette, should I move to New York? It's too hot here. Uh, my cousin Alex in the Bronx at Fordham University is saying it's pretty steamy up there too, but uh, you might want to check in with him to see how warm it is up around the Big Apple. But uh, if you're moving to New York, send us a postcard. Hope it's a little bit cooler there than what you find here in the Mid-South area. So anyway, we'll keep our eyes on this. Keep it tuned to WREG.com. We'll keep you updated on the forecast. Now, because of the lack of rainfall, the vegetation in the Mid-South is drying out. Around I-55 in Crittenden County in Arkansas today, there was a wildfire on the edge of the interstate. Could have been from a chain or a piece of equipment dragging across the pavement and striking a spark. My guess is, sadly, it was probably a cigarette butt that was just tossed out the window, still lit, and that's a very good way to get a large wildfire, a dangerous wildfire going. Lee County in Arkansas, Tate County in Mississippi, this is by counties only, 
I realize that there are some civic areas that are, again, under burn bans. Uh, we'll try to list those tomorrow morning, but right now we're just going on a county-by-county county basis. And so far, these are the only two we have in the areas according to the state agriculture and forestry divisions. Going beyond that into the rest of the tri-state area, numerous counties in Arkansas, central, southwestern, and southeastern, a smattering of counties across Mississippi, and numerous counties, about nine of them, under burn bans in middle and back into around southeastern parts of Tennessee. So again, what we're looking at is the dry air and the lack of rainfall leaching the moisture out of the plants, which is making them very susceptible to catching fire. So anything in the next few days, uh, if you're a smoker, keep the cigarette butts in the car. If you're planning on doing any field burning, if you're planning on getting rid of brush by doing so, you must have a burn permit and you should check just to be on the safe side with your local fire department or forestry division just to make certain that you're in the clear to do any burning. Right now it is starting to get dangerous and a large wildfire could be the result of just a tiny little, I meant to have a barbecue in the backyard type situation. So again, please check and see that, again, burning is allowed in your particular area. We'll have an updated list on here coming up tomorrow morning on News Channel 3 Daybreak, so stay tuned for more on that. And again, stay tuned to News Channel 3 for more information about how things are going to shake out here. In the tropics, good news, we only have one storm system and that is Lorenzo. That's in the middle of the Atlantic. It has gained strength once again to become a Category 4 storm, and over the next several days, it's going to be making its way back to the northeast. Eventually, toward the end of next week, it might be a threat for the British Isles around Britain and Ireland. We're not seeing any threat here, nothing in the Gulf, nothing in the Caribbean, nothing in the western Atlantic, so things are decently quiet, and it took a very quick drop-off. Not much of anything else is left over uh, into and around the area for the time being. So, so far so good, but remember we still have a long period of time before we are out of hurricane season. That comes to an end on December the 1st, so we've got a very long way to go. The ocean levels are still heating up out there, so through September into October and early November, we can still pick up some pretty nasty storms out there. So definitely want to keep attuned to the National Hurricane Center, and the weather experts will keep you updated on that. All right, first meeting was this past Thursday in Truman, Arkansas. Next one coming up will be at Big Sandy, Tennessee this Monday, September 30th. The meetings are for Skywarn spotter training that becomes you become the eyes and ears of the national weather service in memphis to tell them what's going on you get the opportunity to pass your information along to them which in turn passes information along to people like me and my colleagues here at news channel three so we can tell everybody else what you saw at a particular location and that information might help save lives. So something to think about becoming a volunteer. Again, Big Sandy on Monday, Tuesday, October the 1st in Huntington, Tennessee at the Carroll County Emergency Operations Center. This coming Thursday, Madison County at the Jackson Emergency Operations Center at 7 p.m. And next Monday, the 7th, it'll be at McNary County at the 911 Center in Selmer, Tennessee. These right here are just the next four meetings about a baker's dozen of them over the next couple of weeks as we go into storm season number two, which lasts from October through about early December. Now is the time to get ready for severe weather and knowing what to look for and what to report back to the National Weather Service is going to be key in keeping everybody safe. The more people we have becoming weather spotters, the safer we are all going to be. So please consider becoming a spotter. Meetings are totally free. Show up, attend the course. They last about an hour, hour and a half, depending on how many questions are asked and answered from the National Weather Service meteorologists who teach the course. And if you'd like to know more, you can follow them on Twitter or Facebook at NWS Memphis or go to weather.gov, click on the Mid-South area, and it'll take you directly to the National Weather Service Memphis homepage on the interwebs out there. Tommy Lee, 37476497. Could use a shorter handle there, but very good view of some sun earlier this week. Can't tell if this was sunrise or sunset, but thank you very much, Mr. Tommy Lee, for sending that one along. James R. Gulledge from Humboldt, Tennessee, 
sunlight through the trees on Friday. Thank you very much for that web picture. And a double shot from TLC underscore 1212 from West Memphis, Arkansas on I-40 sunrise from this morning. One there and another view just down the road a bit with a few clouds into and around the area. Thank you very much for sending all of those along. If you've got weather pictures, we'd love to see them and share them like we do here and also on our newscast. All you have to do is send them to any of my social media pages or if you want to get really old-fashioned, hard to believe emails being called old-fashioned, but send them along to me at austin.onic at wreg.com. And again, would love to see your pictures out there. So please let us see what you are seeing out there as we get into uh, through the rest of the area for tonight. Steve Montgomery, tie and shirt color, looking like it might be hot. Uh, actually, the air conditioning system is working properly here in the studio. So just being a little casual, no sense being all buttoned up for a weathercast online. Might as well make everybody feel as comfortable as possible. We're here, we're talking, we're just hanging around and just chatting a little bit about weather. So just uh, taking it a little bit more easy for right now. I suppose I could get a cup of coffee and hold it up, but I've been told by several viewers that that's absolutely unprofessional and they won't stand for it. Yes, I'm not kidding about that. So uh, in the meantime, thank you very much, Mr. Montgomery, uh, for that comment on there for the time being. Uh, Druzy Fluellen, hope I'm saying that right. Weather is great. Hope it stays like this. Nice out there for tonight. Could use a little bit cooler conditions. I think I'm ready for sweater weather out there and maybe some hot chocolate without it heating us all up too much. Temperatures for tomorrow morning back in the lower 70s with partly cloudy skies, mostly cloudy at others. It's going to kind of fluctuate back and forth tomorrow morning, but the main thing is it's going to be warm, winds out of the south, and not that much in the way of cooler weather anytime soon for much of the area. That'll wrap it up for this edition of Weather Overtime. Fairly quiet for tonight, and again, we'll have an update coming up here in about an hour and 40 minutes on News Channel 3 at 10. I'll be back again to give you an update on News Channel 3 Daybreak tomorrow morning, so stick around for a lot more on that. And, of course, you can pick us up on any of these social media channels, my forecast and other information out there, so stick around for a lot more across the Mid-South area as we go into, again, the weekend, uh, first weekend of autumn. Hopefully, again, some cooler weather by next weekend. We'll keep you updated on that, so stay tuned for more details. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you very much for the weather pictures out there, your comments, the weather reports out across the area, and stay tuned for a complete update tonight on News Channel 3 at 10. Thanks for joining us.